Let, let me do. Let me ask you this: is like you've been around a lot of social media people. I ain't gonna mm -hmm. call anybody out by name. I ain't gonna say nobody's name, but you know. Do you guys understand that there's a lot of people that have a, a big public presence, that, like, you know, damn near everybody knows who they are, okay? And they might make 30, 40, 50 million revenue. And they're, they're damn near poor. They're spent money so fast and so foolishly. And, you know, 30 something, 40% of the money goes right back to ads. So 30, 40% of what they're making goes right back to, to the few main companies that do all the ads. That's usually the best case, what you're talking about. Typically, it's a motherfucker with a million followers who's broke. Like, I see that shit, you know, like they don't have money. I've been hanging out with these guys and they like sh asking the waiter how much it costs. And we ain't, it's not, we ain't even, at, we ain't at, we ain't at Tao, right? It's like, <laughs> we have some like family restaurant there. How much is that again? I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, that, that ain't even a joke. How many people out there, nobody's name, okay? But how many people out there got a couple million followers and, you know, I know how many that I've taken to dinner personally, and I gotta pay for it. When I invite one of those people to do something with me, I just figure I'm paying for it. Yeah. I just figure that I'm gonna pay for it because they ain't got no money. Yeah, because you gotta have a business around it. And like, you know, sponsorships, they only pay so much, and it's just hard to make a living off sponsorships. And you, you gotta have a, I wouldn't do social media if it wasn't a business. I, I started my business before I started my, my, any of my accounts. It was like to support that. It wasn't the other way around. There, sure. There's people out there that they spent so much money on ads, they spent so much money on just absurdities. I mean, the, the ads wasn't bad money spent, that helped their business go in. Mm -hmm. uh, that helped them scale the cold traffic business. There's so many people that spent so fucking much cash, dude, they don't have shit. Or they, and they, they look like a baller, they look like a fucking crazy baller. They look like they got all kinds of money. And like, you know, somebody like you is being at home, you're like, oh, you know, if I could scale to his size. And you know, what, what got me thinking about that when you said like you're building a monster in the background, that some of the, some of the way people build infrastructure, it just eats the money. Mm -hmm. You couldn't imagine how much, it just eats the money. It just eats the money. They're it's fucking a broke. monster, man. And, it, and you gotta feed that monster every month. You feed it money. And if you don't feed it, it eats you. I'm, I'm gonna bring my drooler buddy up here in a few minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, we chat for a bit first here, but you know what? Is it just, just, just say out to them, like, how, no, let's talk about it. Say, bring the topic up, bring the topic up, because I want, I want to fucking talk about it with the group with you up here with us. It's like, how many people fucking, how many people came through and spent six figures, maybe seven figures on fucking jewelry, and then later, later on they're selling it back to you for some discount rate because they're broke? 90% off. Whoa. Yeah. So that, that ain't a joke, that's real. But we'll talk about it in depth and I'll get him up here in a little bit. Whoa. Um, he's selling shit to some of the, I'll talk about it in a little bit. You know, other thought before I, before I fucking lose the thought, man, is like, you know, I wanna go back to the screen. You guys hear me talk about screening, 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 screening. You know, you know how fucking important that is? When I take a new assistant, all right, I get about a thousand people a year. There, there's, you know, Derek, I wanna be your assistant. Derek, I'm, you know, it's meant to be. And when I say a thousand, that's not a joke. That's a real number. That's only twenty a week. It's more than that. It's more than a thousand. All right. And I never met most of these people. They, most of them never even seen me anywhere. And you know, so so what I'm what I'm really saying when I say that is like eight hundred, maybe nine hundred of them are just entirely unqualified. All right. And then there's a subset of them that you'd have to get, you know, you know them. They came on boot camp. We worked together before. It's somebody that you'd have to give them a thought. About, you know, you'd, you'd spend a moment and think about it. Okay. Um, I pick about three people a year. So out of that thousand, it's like three. It's like three. And I tell them, and you know, some of you will think this is crazy. And I think it's fucking brilliant, by the way. And I think you should do it. Some of them won't do it. You should do this. Find your version of it. Okay. I, I tell them, that, you know, I, if you're going to take that role, you're telling me that this is your calling in life. You're telling me you're going to make this the priority of your life for at least 12 months. I don't want somebody that wants to come assist once in a while. It's somebody that's been on the program probably three times, uh, paid as a client probably for th three programs. Then um, they're going to spend at least 12 months with me. And we're going to travel everywhere. And they're going to carry heavy luggage. They're gonna carry. They're gonna carry fucking banners. They're gonna carry the fucking camera equipment. They're gonna carry you know fucking twenty pounds of condoms that I bring on tour with me. They're gonna whatever the fuck. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, you seen the one that got my fucking image on them? Yeah. So they got it. Whatever the fuck I want them to carry, they're gonna go do that. All right. And they're, you know, I, I, I tell them like you know what you're signing up for, what you're asking to do. I don't talk them into it. I try to talk them out of it. And then I make them sell me. And that's not some trick or manipulation. It's like, I want to tell them every reason why they would hate it. I want to tell them, like, bro, like, you know, there, there's going to be time. You're going to be awake 40 hours working on a project. 
You know, you're, not only are you going to be up all night, it's going to be the next night, and you're still going to be working on this project. I said, dude, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be jet lagged. We're going to fucking travel, you know, several times per year. We're going to travel from a different continent and land on a Friday, and we're going to turn up to boot camp that night. And you're going to have, you know, you're going to slept two hours on a jet. You took a two-hour nap on a jet, and that, that was your experience last night. And you're going to show up, and you're going to be on point, and you're going to enjoy it. I tell them you're going to work 400 hours, 400 days in a year. I tell them you're going to work 30 hours a day. And you know, you're going to fit 30 hours of work into 24. Um, and I'm going to pay you, you know, how much do I pay him? Maybe you know. Nothing. I pay him nothing. I pay him nothing. And they're going to pay 30 something thousand dollars for their own travel expenses. Every penny. I don't pay for a cover charge. I might buy him a drink. I might buy him a Corona somewhere. All right? But they're going to pay for everything. Uh, and if, it, if a person don't want to do that, that's cool. Somebody else does. And you know who the people are that want to do it? They, they tend to have an Ivy League education. They tend to have been an honor student somewhere at a, at a good school. It tends to be somebody who's, uh, even if they don't have a lot of money, um, you know, Graham, you guys know Graham? How many of you guys know Graham? Yeah. Graham took out a personal loan for 35 grand to come travel with me. It's some ridiculous interest rate. I don't remember the interest rate. I think it was something like 13%. So Graham took out a $35,000 loan to go do that. You know what Graham told me when I first met him? He told me he wanted to have his own business. You know, he, he had a ton of those in the aftermath. He made all that money back a long time ago. So, you know, this is a guy with a, a, a two-year degree, an associate's degree, who's making a couple hundred grand a year now. Because I, I wouldn't pick the wrong person to go do this with me. It's got to be the right person, you know? And, you know, I, I got rid of a couple of those people. One guy traveled with me for seven months, and he's like, oh, Derek, I don't know, blah, blah. Uh, I also tell him, I tell him the first time you miss something, before they ever start, I tell him the first time you miss something, um, so, you know, your, your mom, somebody's going to be in the hospital. Somebody's going to, you know, you have a family member that's going to die, and you're going to skip their funeral. And I said, I don't even want you to tell me about it. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. After one year, tell me about it. Tell me after your 12 months. So I don't even want, you know, not only do I not care, don't even tell me. Tell me after 12 months. You know, I, I had one guy that uh, he, you know, after seven months he didn't show up. I got rid of him immediately. And I, and I tell him, you know, you're not going to talk to me. You're not going to talk to my social group. Anybody in my social group that wants to, you know, you're, you're, you're breaking your commitment with me. Anybody from the social circle that wants to hang out with you is not going to hang out with me. They're going to pick sides. So if that sounds fucked up, to some people that sounds really fucked up. That's, you know, man, that's a lot. No, I mean, if a guy don't want to do it, you know what, I'm, but you know what, I'm going to go do it with him. A, I'm going to go do it with them. B, they're telling me, they're coming to me saying, that, you know, Derek, I need to do this. So why do you need to do this? It's kind of what you said earlier. It's like, why do you need to do this? Why is that important to you? you now, you know, the people that do that in the aftermath, they have fantastic outcomes. I, I don't think I have to say that part. I think that part should be clear. They have fantastic outcomes. But I want to make sure that our goals are in alignment. I want to make sure that guy's not going to be annoying in any way. I want to make sure that when I've been awake 30 hours and we're, we're, we're sitting next together, each other doing something in some weird foreign country and the jet's delayed and so on, you know, I want to be able to enjoy hanging out with the dude when I'm, when I'm exhausted, when, I, when I've done far too much, when you're just exhausted, half sick. You know, I want somebody that I can enjoy, like, well, we're there sick together. I want to be able to have a laugh together. You know, my buddy Travis, who's been around with me for more than a year now, 14 months, I think, um, he and I, we were, we were in Greece in, uh, I think, June. End of June, we did a, a chat in Greece, and I don't know, a small, you know, 70 people or something showed up. And uh, yeah, it was like 3 in the morning. It was just him and I. It's like 3 in the morning. And uh, you know, he, he's beat. He looks tired. He looks fucking tired. He don't say anything. You know, not a word of complaint. Not a word of complaint. You know, and it's got to be somebody who's not going to be resentful. Well, they're not complaining. They're also not gathering like a, a accruing a resentment in the background. You understand? That's very important. Some people will shut up, but they get then then they get resentful, and then they get passive aggressive, and then you gotta get rid of them. So you don't want that. All right. So, but he, he, I, I say you, you know you look exhausted, buddy. He's like you know I really am exhausted. And I, I said uh, how old are you right now? 25. He's like yeah I'm 25. I said Travis, one day you're gonna be an old man. If you, don't, if you don't get hit by a bus or some shit first, one day you're going to be an old man, and you're going to be dying of cancer, some shit like that, and you're going to wish you feel as great as you do right now. You'd do anything to feel as good as you feel right now, 25 and exhausted. If you were dying of cancer, what would you give to be 25 and exhausted? Anything. And we had a little laugh together, and then we took care of our stuff. 
And he's brought that up several times in the aftermath as kind of a poignant moment, you know? Um, so I, I want to be around those type of people. If it, somebody wants to be my, you know, my business partner, Travis, I just tell them about uh, 25 and exhausted. When you were, when we were in Greece and you're, you were all tired. I think that was, I think that was London. It was Greece, God damn it! I said so. <laughs> <laughs> Never contradict your wingman. He was so tired he don't remember. <laughs> what did I say about that? Oh yeah, it's like when you're. When you're, when you're 60 years old and you're, you're having trouble breathing, you're gonna wish you felt this good. <laughs> so when you're old and dying of cancer, you wish you feel so good. So I don't know, man. You know, I, I, those are people that I want to. You know, D Dan Kennedy died recently. You, got, you people know this. You know, who Dan Kennedy is. You know, Dan, Dan Kennedy when he's. Uh, on his deathbed, the, the last thing he fucking does is he, he fucking records uh, uh, a marketing communication <laughs> telling them, true story, look it up. Dan Kennedy records a marketing communication tell, telling people, continue to work with my business, I'm about to die, but continue to work with my business partner. All right, so those are the people that I want to be partnered with. Those are the people that I want to spend time with. And you know, you, look, if you did what you did, you already have a lot of those type of thoughts in your head. One more piece, I'll, I'll pass this back to Brandon, we'll get a couple more questions in here, but um, you know, I, I got that from Jim Cramer. Jim Cram you guys know who Jim Cramer is, finance guy? Because it's a TV show. You know, Cramer back uh, before he was a TV personality, he used to be a hedge fund manager. And Cramer said, when you, if you work with me, you're going to work uh, six and a half days a week. You're going to work every day of the year. Uh, your, your, your child's going to be sick and somebody else is going to take care of them. Somebody's going to die in your family and you're going to skip the funeral. And uh, the first time you miss a single day is the last day that you work with me. The first time you miss a day, you're out of here. It's the last day you work with me. Uh, and, but he also said, you know, and anybody that spends three years at this firm is going to leave here with at least a million dollars. And his, his secretary, with a high school education, his secretary left with four and a half million. His secretary, with a high school education, left with four and a half million. Where was she going to make that somewhere else? So, you know, that, that, those are the type of people that I want to work around. And, you know, what, what, is, what is my version of that? Is the guy that came to work with me, now don't, whatever his goals were, it became a goal of mine that he has to do that shit. He has to do that shit. He might not like me. He might cry. He might whimper. And I'm not saying that in an insulting way, but he might cry. He might whimper. And yes, I've seen both. But goddamn it, he's going to accomplish whatever those fucking goals are, or he's got to go fuck off. He's going to behave in a way that he's going to help me with the things that I want. I'm going to make sure that he gets the things that he wants. And if you don't want to behave that way, get the fuck out. The fuck out. I have no, zero room for that bullshit. And you got to go find some people like that. And yes, they exist. Yes, they exist. But you got to go find some people like that. And if you can't have a poignant conversation with a headhunter, then you're going to have to find them through a different lead source. You might have to find them in a room like this, by the way, which is not a bad thing. Because you know, you know what we just did is we created a shared culture about that. That's 100% true what I said. But that also is a thought in some other people's head here is like, how many of you would like to work with a 31-year-old guy that's making a couple million bucks a year and uh, gonna go do something else? How many of you would be a useful ally to have in life? And look around, keep your arms up and look around. All right, so you know, this might be a better opportunity to go find somebody like that because you can have an open conversation. Derek Moneyberg here. We're closing down applications and enrollment for my stock market mentoring program. This program is definitely not for everyone. What I've created is an in-depth masterclass on everything you need to know to build real wealth in the stock market. Inside the course, I'm going to be covering stock picking, research fundamentals, futures, options, charts, leverage, foreign exchange, commodities, crypto and other alternative currencies, day trading, and more. This is not a course for dabblers. Many have compared my courses to their MBA level graduate coursework. And if you are currently willing and able to dedicate 10 plus hours of your time and focus every week to something that intense, I urge you, do not apply. This course is going to be dense and comprehensive. It will arm you with an arsenal of investment tools from basic concepts to high level advanced strategies that I've developed while collaborating with some of the smartest financial minds in the world. For those who are accepted into the program and dedicate themselves to learning and internalizing the content, they'll graduate with a much more comprehensive understanding of how to navigate and win in any market or economic climate. So if you think you have what it takes and you want to join us on this eight week journey, click that link, apply, and if you are well qualified, a member of my team will reach out for your interview. Do not procrastinate, apply now because enrollment closes soon.